Lanzarote is one amongst eight islands in the Canary Islands archipelago. It is home to white houses, awesome volcanoes, interesting vineyards, vibrant diving locations, lava, lava, more lava, and one of the most beautiful and otherworldly lagoons I have ever seen. El Charco Verde, which literally translates to the green pond. This pond is located next to the town of El Golfo, on the west side of the island, and it extends for around 100 meters parallel to the ocean, filling a small part of the crater of the Montaña de Golfo volcano. Seawater flows to the lagoon through underwater connections from the sea, keeping the lagoon from evaporating. But the most striking thing about this lagoon is its constant strong green color. But why is it so green? Hi! What's up? It's nice here. I'm very hot. If you try to guess why El Charco Verde is green, You've probably guessed it. Algae. Algae do photosynthesis, which means they fix inorganic carbon using energy from the sun, which basically means they produce their own food using sunlight energy. That's wacky and cool in so many ways. Hello, ducky. <coughs> yeah, I know, algae are cool, eh? <coughs> yep, yeah. In the first step of photosynthesis, light in the blue and red spectrum are absorbed by chlorophyll, a pigment located in the plant's cells in structures called chloroplasts. The light in the green spectrum, which is not absorbed by these pigments, is then reflected by the other structures in the plant. That's why plants and algae are green. And microalgae, algae in general, but especially microalgae, can be found in practically every body of water. In ponds, rivers, the ocean, this lake behind me, and of course, El Charco Verde. However, El Charco Verde is a bit special. El Charco Verde is quite impressive in its greenness. Why is that? Why is it so green compared to the ocean, compared even to the lake behind me? Because this lake is green because of the bottom, not because of the water itself. El Charco Verde's water is green, as green as it can be. Why? I'm glad you asked. To demonstrate to you why El Charco Verde is so green, I did a little experiment. I collected water from the lake where I was just now filming and I split it in two bottles. And I added a bit of, well, dirt, just to mimic the lake, to both bottles. And in this bottle, I added a bit of plant fertilizer. This was four days ago. And what you can see is that the water in the smaller bottle is already more turbid than the water in the bigger bottle where no plant fertilizer was added. And I suspect that in like a week or so, they are gonna be, both of them, more turbid than they are now, and this one substantially more turbid than this one. What happened here in the small bottle is that I added nutrients to the water. These nutrients increase photosynthesis and the algae reproduce faster, and this can lead to something called algal blooms. This is a fairly common event that can happen in the ocean, lakes, ponds, river, pretty much anywhere where you have algae in the water. These algal blooms can be triggered, for example, by wastewater and fertilizers rich in nitrogen and phosphorus, which are usually the two main nutrients responsible for algal blooms. And algal blooms can have very serious consequences. When in very high numbers, the algae can create a thick layer on the surface of the water, preventing light from reaching the sea bottom. And organisms that need light to survive, like corals and algae, seagrass, and all associated ecosystems, can die because of that. So that's bad thing number one. Because of this explosion in the number of algae, they will end up consuming all these nutrients that were added this one time to the water and die. And the dead algae will be eaten by bacteria, which consume a lot of oxygen while doing so. At this point, you end up with water depleted in nutrients and oxygen, which can lead to the death of pretty much entire ecosystems. Bad thing number two. And because everything comes in threes, many of these algae can be toxic. So don't go around swimming in algal blooms. That is not a good idea. And also don't eat fish that were fished in places where there was an algal bloom occurring at the time. Bad thing number three. But, but, as far as we know, or as far as I could find out, there is no evidence suggesting that there are any fertilizers or that there's wastewater being dumped in the region of El Charco Verde. And we know the lagoon has been there for many decades. 
so something else is causing its epic greenness. The volcanic substrate in the area is known to be rich in minerals. During volcanic eruptions, minerals from the interior of the Earth reach the surface, and these minerals remain in the substrate even after the volcano becomes inactive. While researching for this video, I did not find many studies on El Charco Verde, but I did find one study from several years ago that measured very high concentrations of phosphate, a phosphorus-containing compound, in the lagoon. A constant input of phosphorus from the surrounding volcanic substrate, coupled with a constant underground exchange of water with the ocean, might create the perfect conditions to sustain algae paradise. When I decided to make this video, I wanted to give you a bit more information about the algae species in this lagoon. But surprisingly, there aren't many studies on this. I did find this one book from 1991 where they identified some of the species in the lagoon. And, you know, I thought because the lagoon is so small, there would be, there. I know there would be a lot of species, but I thought there would be like a couple of dominant ones and maybe some dozens more. But just in this book, they identified 140 algae taxa. And they only studied diatoms, which is only one type of algae. That's a lot of species living in this tiny lagoon. And whoa, it must be awesome to look at that under the microscope. That's why El Charco Verde is green. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to make a video about that one specific pond. I guess it just really fascinated me because usually we attribute algal blooms and really green bodies of water to something bad. The water is dirty, it's polluted, but it doesn't seem to be the case here. It seems like this algae richness is maintained not by pollution or human activities, but by nature itself, which is really nice because it looks really cool. And now I don't have to feel bad for liking it and for wanting it to continue existing. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to support what I do here on the channel, consider donating to my Patreon or a one-time donation. The links are down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to. Thank you to all my patrons over on Patreon who make this channel possible. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.